improvised manoeuvre there. They're absolutely in perfect choreographed timing with one another. Smoke trailing behind, diving down towards the sea and punching back out towards us here on the beach. Flying with absolute precision, doing a wonderful job for us today, the Firebirds. Soaring so high into the sky, you have to keep uh, careful of your eyes as we're looking up now. The sun is uh, beating down on us. Look at the sun glistening on the canopies of these uh, wonderful little aircraft. So manoeuvrable. And uh, Nigel and John doing a wonderful display for us again today. They love it, don't they? I'll tell you who else loves these aircraft, Ian, and that's the Americans. This is an American-designed RV4 aircraft. Over 10,000 of them have been built over the years, and mostly kit builds, like build-it-yourself planes as well, which is quite incredible. They're originally developed as a single-seat RV3. Their normal cruising speed is about 160 miles per hour, but these guys don't do normal. We don't want to do normal, so at the air show, we fly up to 200 miles per hour. Just a quick mention from Essex Police uh, because uh, Spencer Jarrett, if you're listening, Spencer Jarrett, the uh, police have something of yours on the Greensward. So if Spencer Jarrett can make his way to the uh, police van on the Greensward, you can be reunited with a lost item. A quick hello as well, a shout out to Michael John Redpath. It's his 15th birthday today. He's uh, here with some black Crocs on apparently. So uh, there we are, we even found out what he's wearing. Thank you from Lily, Leon and Lizzie. Just a... a modified for their role as air show performers. They've been fitted with smoke systems, wingtip pyrotechnics for the twilight displays and LED lights as well. They're not fitted with inverted fuel systems so they have to maintain positive G loading as much as possible. And that was a beautiful heart there from the Firebirds as they bank out over in the distance by the wind farm. What a beautiful display that was from Nigel Reed and John Dodd. And thanks to ground crew Tom Everett over at Great Oakley looking after the team as well. Ladies and gentlemen, the Firebirds display team. Radio Air Show. A few more people to mention here from the uh, seafront. Can you give a huge shout out? Listening on the Wildcat, Sam. You're really looking forward to this, aren't you? I am really excited about this. I don't think I've seen the Wildcat display for quite some time. It's flown in from Duxford this afternoon, part of the fighter collection aircraft. And uh, we have a Grumman Wildcat FM2. This aircraft dates back to the US Navy from 1945. Let's see what she... <laughs> It was built in 
1944, and the engine is a right aeronautical corp engine, R182056WA for the experts among you, and it has a Curtis electric propeller. I'm loving the sound of the aircraft, the growl of the engine. It's very cat-like, isn't it, Ian? It certainly is, and a great addition to, uh, to Clapton today. Uh, and those stripy wings really do stand out. If you're listening at home, yeah, you can really see the stripes on the wings of the Wildcat. And that, that noise, that to roar, it's, it is almost tiger-like, isn't it? It's very tiger-like. I'm loving this aircraft. Those stripes are very special. They've been put back on the aircraft. They're invasion stripes to mark the 80th anniversary this year of D-Day. General Motors Corporation, the Eastern Aircraft Division in New, Jer New Jersey, US, US Navy aircraft in 1945, and it entered service in July of that year. The MOOC Naval Air Station in Oregon, and the aircraft subsequently was struck off the US Navy as early as 1946. It then went through a series of private owners all the way up to 1975 when it was placed on display at the Chenault Air Museum in California. And this is where it stayed until the early 90s when it moved to Chino for a complete overhaul to airworthy condition by the fighter rebuilders. And this post-restoration flight took place in 1993. The aircraft was then acquired by the fighter collection at Duxford in the same year and it currently wears the scheme of the Fleet Air Arm Wildcat when it was on board HMS Tracker in the 1940s. of the crowd there, the wildcat pulling up, almost roaring at us as he banks over and punches out towards the wind farm. And I stand corrected, it's not an oil rig, it's a boat on stilts way out to sea, looking back on us this afternoon. Uh, 
such a, a rib with uh, members of, uh, of the police in front of us, keeping everybody safe. Well, they put their blue lights on for us, look. <laughs> Give us a little glimpse of the blue lights at the back. And this is the last pass for the Wildcat, so camera's ready as it flies past the commentary point, dipping each wing as it heads over towards the end of Clapton Pier now. What a beautiful display from a remarkable aircraft. And a victory, drop, victory roll over the pier on the way out. Thanks, PK. Safe back to Duxford. What a fantastic display. So, just before we welcome a very important arrival to Clapton Air Show, let's see where Steve Scruton is on the greensward. I've come right to the far end of the greensward, Ian. I've come to the Toby Carvery craft because we have a gentleman here in Clapton today who has come from the other side of the world, from Australia, to see the fair swordfish. Now Sam is going to take you through uh, the display and I'll bring you some details about why we're calling this the Taranto formation but what a sight this is Sam right in front of us now. So thank you to Navy Wings for bringing these beautiful aircraft to us this afternoon. Leading the display at the front is the beautiful fairy swordfish. We believe it's the oldest surviving still flying swordfish in the world so that's leading the display. You can see just over towards the wind farm the beautiful stripes on the top of the high wing there and then to his right we have the yellow aircraft which is the Stinson Reliant and to the left of the lead pilot we have the Wasp helicopter. This is a fantastic demonstration of the fleet air arm which served so importantly during World War II and up to modern day in different aircraft as well as a extremely competent and significant part of Royal Naval aviation history. So we call this part of the display the Taranto Formation. The Battle of Taranto took place on the night of the 11th to the 12th of November 1940 during the Second World War between British naval forces under Admiral Andrew Cunningham and Italian naval forces. The Royal Navy launched the first all-aircraft ship-to-ship naval attack in history, employing 21 fairy swordfish biplane torpedo bombers from the aircraft carrier HMS Illustrious in the Mediterranean Sea. The attack struck the battle fleet of the Regia Marina at anchor in the harbour of Taranto using aerial torpedoes despite the shallowness of the water. According to Admiral Cunningham, Taranto and the night of the 11th to the 12th of November 1940 should be remembered forever as having shown once and for all that in the fleet air arm the Navy has its most devastating weapon. just momentarily left from the uh, Stinson and the Wasp. They're just flying around to rejoin us later for their solo displays. And looking out towards the wind farm, we've got a wonderful view here from the center of the beach of the huge biplane that it is, the fairy swordfish. We're so lucky to see this. We believe it's the oldest surviving airworthy fairy swordfish in the world. She first flew on Trafalgar Day in October the 21st, 1941 and was nicknamed Blackfish because she was built by Blackburn Aircraft at Sherburn in Elmet and delivered to Litchfield in 1941 for overseas transport to Gibraltar. 
The aircraft is W5856. She served with the Royal Navy's Mediterranean Fleet for a year. Little is known about her acts of service during the Mediterranean, but we know she was based on the north front of Gibraltar, carrying out patrols over the Straits. And you can see as you look out at the display, she's very gracefully and carefully flying along, very quiet, very softly. It would be perfect for those sort of recon reconnaissance missions, gathering intelligence on patrols. And as the swordfish flies out towards the pier, we're rejoined by the Stinson Reliant, the yellow aircraft, as she banks in front of us, in front of the wind farm, showing us the wonderful design of her wings. It's a very high-winged aircraft. It's very pretty looking. I've not actually seen the Stinson display before. I've only ever seen it on the ground. She was built in Detroit in 1943 and transferred to the Royal Navy. She's an American civil aircraft and first actually appeared all the way back in 1933. And now we're joined by the Wasp helicopter. This is a utility light helicopter and it was originally based its design off the Army Scout helicopter and then it evolved into the, the Wasp, which then served with the Royal Navy with the fleet air arm. It looks a little bit like a wasp with its aileron kind of uh, wheels hanging down below the aircraft. It's banking up almost to the vertical there, the propeller high up in the sky and just twirling around the top, pointing back out towards the wind farm, showing its incredible maneuverability. You can just imagine if you're out at sea on a Royal Navy ship and the wasp coming in to land, they had to be so agile and those pilots need did incredible skill to be able to land at sea. She was part of a naval air squadron for training and based on several different ships, but most prominently HMS Aurora. The design that she has on the aircraft, if you look closely, has red crosses painted on. And that's because she also served in the Falklands on HMS Hecla in a casualty evacuation role. towards the Jaywick end of the beach, you can see the kind of quadricycle undercarriage hanging below, very wasp-like looking. She's got full cut, fully castery. And the wasp helicopter is flying facing towards the beach, flying sideways along a wave, a little waggle of the rotor tail there as she pivots around and the pilot can see you so do give them a big wave, nose punching down towards the sea. An incredible capable helicopter, a five seat helicopter that was used for transporting crew around when on active service for the Royal Navy. Now that gave me a little flashback to the Harrier days when we used to have the Harrier here at Clapton that would hover in front of the commentary point and move sideways. <laughs> and we're getting a little taste of that now. That looks incredible, doesn't it? Wouldn't you love to be in that? Oh, I'd love to have a go. Dipping its nose to the uh, crowd here in Clacton, almost like a, a salute really as uh, the Wasp heads off now to the right. We can still see the other two aircraft in this Taranto formation now over the, uh, the wind farm. One thing that we're not seeing this year is the barges. Because of the windy conditions, sadly, the barges that normally bring dozens of passengers from all over Essex to watch the air show from the water weren't able to make it uh, today. There's a few light uh, boaty craft out there, but uh, nothing like we normally see on a sunny day like this. So the, the Wasp is pulling up there. 
steep sort of angular climb, almost hovering momentarily, tail waiter just twizzling around towards the beach, banking down back towards the sea. Flown very capably this afternoon by Tim de la Fosse. He served as a Sea King pilot with the Fleet Air Arm and the Reserves from the early 80s right through to 2001. And he was aircraft carrier based for the first tour flying on HMS Illustrious. After his naval career, he then joined uh, an airline and flows, uh, flies Boeings, of course, as many of our display pilots do. He's flown for many different airlines, but apart from flying the Wasp and the Navy Wings, his historic flight, he also enjoys flying the Grob Tutor as an RAF reservist, and he owns his own de Havilland Chipmunk as well. I bet that's a lot of fun. Yes, just as... Wasps were involved in numerous operations, most famously scoring hits on the Argentinian submarine Santa Fe, preventing her from submerging and being a threat to the British task force. Now, as we look out to sea, we uh, now witness approaching us the other two members of this wonderful formation. The fairy swordfish, so recognizable by its uh, biplane look, and I think we're now going to get a closer look. It's their turn for the limelight, isn't it, Sam? Absolutely. So you can see the, the yellow aircraft banking to the right towards Jaybrick, Jaybrick Beach, and then to the left we've got the fairy swordfish pointing towards the pier. A really lovely view here of the markings of the aircraft as she banks by. heading towards us on the beach, a yellow aircraft pointing directly to the beach, banking her wings over towards the pier in a gentle manoeuvre there. The Stimson Reliant is a high-winged aircraft, as you can see she's a monoplane with seating for up to four passengers. She's extremely versatile with good performance and an unwavering solid feel when you fly them, which is ideally suited for communication and training roles. graceful uh, demonstration at the moment, a, a top speed of 135 miles an hour, the Stenson, with a range of 850 miles, so that's pretty nifty, you can get around nicely in that, couldn't you? type was employed extensively by the fleet air arm between 1943 and 1946 mainly for navigational training and as a communications aircraft for their second line units most of those aircraft were actually retired to the USA after the war and became civil registered Royal Australian Navy. 
from the late 70s and given his Navy wings in 1979. He flies many different aircraft and also, of course, is a number one of our aerobatic pilots that flies this time with Virgin Atlantic Airways and he also enjoys flying. <laughs> standing with a, a very special guest here at Clapton Air Show today. His name is Jonathan Hearn and he's come from a town about four hours north of Sydney in Australia to be with us today to watch this very aircraft. I'm not going to interrupt his filming. He's holding his camera into the sky to record this moment. Jonathan, tell us why you wanted to come halfway around the world to watch this. Well, uh, my dad flew these off aircraft carriers at the beginning of World War II, and uh, it's just one of those moments. We have static uh, swordfish in Australia, but to see one live and flying, and uh, it's just brilliant, and I'm just blown away. Thank you, Clacton on Sea, for putting on the great weather. Magic. Uh, yeah, his history is uh, pretty amazing. He survived uh, World War II. He crash landed in Norway. Uh, was a POW for four years. And uh, thanks to um, C for Charlie, which was his uh, plane's uh, number, call sign, was uh, I'm here. We're all here. So thank you very much. Wow. And you've got your Navy Wings swordfish t-shirt on today yes. how do you feel watching this knowing this is just the sort of plane that your dad was in i think it's just amazing it's only what 80 odd years ago and now we've got amazing aircraft supersonic with space stations and it's just he couldn't even imagine this but he lived long enough to see a lot of it and the pioneers, the engineers, the designers of these planes, wow, amazing. Did he talk to you much about his experiences in the Swordfish? Not until later in life, like a, like a lot of uh, service person do. Uh, but thank heavens, he uh, left us a book of his story before he's died. And if there's anybody here today that'd like to have a look through it, or my dad's uh, log book, I'm on table 16, and if you want to walk past and have a look through it, you're most welcome. Jonathan, I'm going to let you savour this moment. It was so disappointing that it didn't happen yesterday, but uh, you're going to be taking some very special memories back to Australia, aren't you? Absolutely. Thank you, Ian. All the best. Jonathan Hearn, who's come from Australia uh, to be with us today to uh, watch this amazing aircraft. And uh, it's just so graceful, Sam, isn't it? I mean, we're now with the very best possible view uh, overlooking the swordfish just making a very... And flying so beautifully for us this afternoon, we have Glenn Allison, who's a volunteer pilot with the Navy Wings Heritage Flight. He's also their QFI, their Qualified Flying Instructor. He has a long and impressive career from the Royal Navy. He was Lieutenant Commander Glenn Allison, who joined them in 1984, first as an apprentice aircraft engineer, working on the Lynx helicopters before doing flying training in 1990. He fell 
Charlotte followed the well-trodden path as a naval helicopter pilot, doing elementary flying training on the Bulldog and then Gazelle helicopters at Royal Naval Airfield Cold Rose, where he was awarded his wings. He became very busy flying the Sea King and became a commando jungly pilot, flying frontline service on tours of duty in Northern Ireland, Bosnia and Norway. He became a qualified helicopter instructor with the Defence Helicopter Flying School at RAF Shawsbury. He converted to the Lynx helicopter and was flight commander on HMS Cumberland in 2001 and he carried out the two-year miss missions in the Baltic with NATO and a nine-month deployment carrying out maritime operations in the Northern Gulf and Indian Ocean. A lovely wing waggle there from Glenn Allison in the fairy swordfish as she makes her way back towards the Jaywick end of the beach. What a wonderful display from a very accomplished team of